we would like to start, in fact, with uh, an artist work because the, the, the project is very much um, based also on, um, on artistical uh, concepts and um, therefore we decided
somebody say one time, you can make it if you try. Oh, and some of us, we try so hard, we try so hard. I want you to know that I don't speak for myself, but I speak for y'all too right now. Johnson's because I'm black from 1969, but actually he's not singing, he's just meditating, and his body is almost emotionless. So he's in his room, in a kind of a poor room of an artist, listening to this music, which is one of the central songs of uh, African American liberation movement. And why is it a central piece for us? Because the question is, I mean, who is narrating whom's history? Who has the right to be at the place to tell, to appropriate the history of the others? But what happens if uh, Blandy does? You know, it starts to shift. You know, categories that we are used to see, are used to believe, get in, get blurry, get into question. And I think. That is something which was for us very important to find a position in a project where Katrin now will make clear how the construction or how the whole uh, development uh, or how it came to the project actually, how to find a position for ourselves as well, inscribing us in a history that is not just our history, but in the end it is our history. So maybe to we'll just introduce this question. Uh, as Pina said in the beginning, the, the uh, project Project Migration started in 2002. It's very, it was closely connected to um, the Cultural Foundation of Germany, um, so called Kulturstiftung des Bundes, which started also in 2002. And the, the, the curatorial director of the Kulturstiftung des Bundes, Hortensia Volkers, she started with three main issues which she thought are crucial for Germany nowadays and which are never really worked out in Germany. It was uh, shrinking cities, the phenomenon of um, 
cities, mainly, cities in, mainly in, in East Germany, but also in the rural area, where many people left, emigrated. Um, um, but uh, this project was also an international project, so they, they also looked into the situation of other countries like England or uh, United States about the situation of shrinking cities. The second project was uh, called Relation. It was about East Europe. Um, uh, and the third project was Migration. Uh, the Hortensia Volkers asked Marion von Osten and me to, if we would be interested to conceive a concept on this um, subject and to run a, a long-term project um, in Germany which, um, is, which will be based on the specific situation of migration in Germany, Germany after the Second World War but which also has an international point of view. And um, uh, mine and I started then in 2002 to write this concept. It was a very interesting um, procedure for both of us. Mine was, was much more into this subject than I was. Um, but um, for me it was also some, something, a kind of continuity, continuation of the, um, of the uh, uh, work of the cooperation with, with uh, Maria Halavajova in Ljubljana, where we um, were working very intensely, intensively on the on the subject of borders um, at the Manifesto Three. Um, what we did, um, we decided to um, to conceive a concept which was quite open, a concept which should be based on a dialogue. Um, and from the beginning, we involved um, partners. We had two main partners. The one partner was the University of Frankfurt um, with uh, the Dina Rohmild. She is a cultural anthropologist. And the and Marion's Institute at that time in Zurich, um, the um, ETH, it's so called ETH Zurich Institute, the theory of authenticity. Art, yes. <laughs> um, so we had two um, institutions outside of um, Cologne and one outside of Germany, was, which was very, at the end, I must say, this was very fruitful because we had a different point of view on the subject as well. Um, what we also tried already to uh, work out in our concept was to turn around to turn around the national perspective on migration. Well, we had the, the one main partner, or the biggest, ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. the biggest main partner got lost. Yes, um, the biggest main partner <laughs> got lost. That's right. Um, it's, um, it's a partner. It's the so-called Domit. It's a, um, a migra migration organization based in Cologne. Um, it was founded by um, a colleague of us, Aita Cherilimas, who started to, uh, to work about the guest worker, the history of guest workers in Germany. Um, and it was a crucial, I must say, it's, it's, it's interesting that I, I didn't thought about it, because it, it was the crucial partner in the, in the project, because it was a migration organization which was involved in the project from the beginning. Um, what also David Blandy's um, work showed is that we tried also in our concept to turn around the national perspective on migration. To, 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 we tried to work out a, um, a change of perspective, of perspective on migration and we tried to show um, migration as a, as a central force of social achievement. We never thought in the beginning that we would make an exhibition or that we would make workshops or whatever. We, it was, we only, what we did in our council was only that we wrote down what would be necessary to do, uh, what the role of the partners are, so that in, the, in a close dialogue, in, in a long-term workshop with the partners, we could develop something very crucial, which, which maybe um, would have a, a very perspective, uh, specific perspective on migration. This concept, fortunately, the Cultural um, Foundation accepted. Um, and then, um, then we started, end of 2002, to implement this project, which was quite complicated. Because the, the, the Cultural Foundation started its work, and the Kunstverein moved into another building. So we, we had to deal with two very um, new situations. 
And the problem we were, we, um, practically the problem we had in the beginning is that the cultural foundation built up a very bureaucratic system of controlling, which was strongly against a process-oriented project like we conceived with project migration. But both of us um, were, uh, were used to dealing with such complicated situation. We were used to, to think also in kind of subversive ways how to undermine this uh, bureaucratic um, control system of the cultural foundation. Um, <laughs> if, yeah, I can, yeah, maybe yeah. I can say a little bit more about the teams because it is um, unusual that uh, teams, as you can find it, big teams, all of them, or almost all of them, with uh, a background uh, of migration or having parents that have been migrating. Yeah. So um, in projects like that, usually only the curators would be involved and talking about Miss artists on that subject. And because the Culture Foundation gave a lot of money, suddenly people were able to be paid. We could pay people, and also Domit would pay people uh, to work for two or three years scientifically on research, on artistic projects. Uh, and I think this was also a very big chance. And we brought also in a different speaker's position because it meant that Dumit had her own budget, which was quite high, yeah? and it was not, in, in comparison to the Kunstverein, in the example, kind of a, a low budget thing. It was really a lot of money that they got, and there were um, uh, 10 young scientists involved who uh, spoke the mother tongue of their parents, yeah? still spoke German and the mother tongue of their parents, and they researched on the history of post-war migration and made kind of oral history, interviews, etc., etc., collected uh, personal stories, um, photographs, objects, etc. And that was a part that uh, Domit was responsible of, and we never said anything, I mean, how they should select or what kind of the criteria, which was sometimes also a problem in the end to make a show, no? but it was very open so that they could do their thing and be uh, similar to this, uh, have been in contact with the university in Frankfurt and the people who have been involved there. They were also people with migrant backgrounds or with political activist backgrounds because most of the people that were involved in the Frankfurt University project transit migration, yeah, which was more on the actual situation, on the situation of today, I mean, how people are not just going into one place, but are in, in transit, I mean, in, in, in a transitory subject um, condition, and also mobile in terms of that maybe Europe is only one spot where they stop to go somewhere else or they live in Poland and go to Berlin working and go back and forth. So a complete different concept than this idea of a container, of a German national container where people would come uh, and stay and settle. Uh, so this <coughs> was this research project transit migration and it was people from Kanakatak. And Kanakatak itself is a group that politicized in the 90s uh, where people with and without migrant backgrounds uh, fought against uh, racist uh, discrimination and also were very powerful in new theoretical approaches. And we profited from that kind of uh, two uh, also intellectual or knowledges uh, that were brought in on the one hand from the elderly generation and uh, children, yeah? and on the other hand of the children that are reflecting the actual situation. Yeah? So it was very um, interesting to uh, somehow if we got a lack about the children. I mean, we had then a problem also because they themselves did not want to uh, make themselves to an issue. So we had kind of a lack of the generation which we would call the second or third generation. But I think it was very, um, uh, in, in, in a way, uh, very productive because they were able, I mean, this generation were able to connect the history of the elderly, of their parents, with the history of the actual uh, situation that migrants live today, yeah? of so-called illegal yeah? Migrat migrants. Yeah? So they were able to connect histories which weren't connected before because of some, in example, losing your right. Yeah? 
people in the guest worker system are always lost rights. Yeah? It was always precarious. You know? Sometimes they, they faked passports, yeah? went illegally over borders illegally. Yeah? So it, they, they found out similar narrations and stories and created from that position a new figure, yeah? which was not a one figure, which is an asylum seeker and a guest worker, or a one, but it is a figure that inhabits, <coughs> or it is implicit, that all these kind of figures of migration are embedded in this one figure. And this, with this figure we worked for the whole project in the end and also for uh, the exhibition. I think that was something new. Another was the term of autonomy of migration. Yeah, autonomy of migration <coughs> also constitutes, comes out of this new uh, I mean, really also radical thinking of a lot of uh, politicized um, uh, intellectuals, a lot of them with migrant backgrounds, um, that, that say it is uh, historically um, the case that the nation state in itself was built because of the mobility of people. You know? The passport was invented because people crossed. Yeah, all there was always kind of a workforce which was independent yeah, and looked for places where they could make their living. I mean, this is a, this is a historical fact from Europe. So what the nation state did is try to control these flows of mobility and actually invented specific forms of control and uh, um, um, measures of uh, mapping uh, people and documenting people, etc. Until now, it is, and this is also something which came out of the studies, uh, it is that there is a kind of, one could even say, dialectic uh, situation between, on the one hand, the people that are crossing, that are subverting um, this kind of concept of the nation state, and uh, the state, or in, in the moment, the supranational organizations, which try to uh, get control over this movement. And uh, in the research, we found a lot of uh, proof uh, that it is true, uh, that it's actually this thesis of the autonomy of migration, of a movement that brings social change, is true because, in example, the European Union had a lot of things in the mind after 89, what would come. You know, a lot of Russian and Polish people would kind of push into uh, the European Union, but it didn't happen. It happened slowly and completely different than they expected, and then they had to improvise. So we found out that even the politicians always improvised and always reacted on the mobility and, uh, of people and not the other way around, uh, which is the, was a concept a long time of the left, uh, that you have a state that is repressing, uh, that has the power to control, the sovereignty to control. We found out in this research uh, that it is not the case, it is a kind of uh, always in connecting a new form of governance today which is reacting on the, 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 the movement of the people and the people are reacting again with their movements taking other ways to get through or to get in uh, Europe and reacting on the control mechanisms and on uh, kind of border techniques. Yeah? If you go to a, a, a border in, uh, in uh, near the, the, the white Russian um, Polish border, uh, they have kind of technically um, put a lot of energy, the EU, into some of these border stations. But nobody is crossing there anymore. Why should you? I mean, why should you go there where, I mean, uh, the police will catch you? Yeah. So there are other, other um, possibilities and ways uh, are chosen to cross. And I think this was very influential also then in the end for making an exhibition, I mean, coming really from a research position uh, where it is not just a, just a hypothesis, if you say, I mean, it, uh, it is social change, but that we already had a proof that this happened, and also in relation to uh, the guest worker system. I mean, the whole uh, forms of requirement measurements that were subverted by uh, <coughs> migrants or other forms of uh, discrimination or uh, even, you know, the idea that these migrants would only stay for two or three uh, years and then leave, this did not happen. And it had a lot of reasons why there was industry, 
or wanted to wanted to keep them. Uh, some made friends, some get married. You know, uh, the, the, the society could not hinder uh, that the people came to Germany and or to other places and made contacts and to get friends with people. So that there is kind of a social fabric that you cannot easily destroy. So and all this kind of uh, um, I have to say um, really grounded uh, theory which came from the research made it possible for us also to inscribe ourselves as curators with kind of more middle class backgrounds. Yeah? Because there uh, suddenly it was clear it is not just their history, you know, that is, has to be narrated, but it is entangled. You know? We are part of this history, and uh, the, the, the countries where we are living in wouldn't look like this, I mean, in positive and negative sense, uh, without this kind of social force of, uh, of the mobility of people. And uh, this was a possibility also then for us to think about also artistic approaches in relation to the document the documentary material. It might be also important to mention is the role of the Kunstwerk. You know, you might know this it's a very German model, which was a model of institution which was founded in the 19th century by um, by the bourgeois um, uh, people who wanted to have their own institution and who wanted also to have the possibility to, co to, to collect. So it's a very, has a very um, bourgeois tradition. And it was, it was unusual also for, especially for colleagues who works with the subject of migration, that such a subject was connected with the Kunstverein and not with another, not with a university or with an institution which is already working with the subject of migration since a lo long time. The idea of the Kulturstiftung des Bundes was to connect it to such an institution which has high international reputation, but which is very heavily um, uh, connected <coughs> to um, the bourgeois society in Germany and to make the subject of migration accessible. This was, for me, coming from Austria, uh, very interesting when we started that this subject of migration was a subject nobody was interested in, in this more bourgeois um, art circles um, in Cologne. Um, we had a lot of um, problems in the beginning to make understandable that such a project is crucial for the four Kunstverein and that it makes sense that an institution which only was dealing over the decades with contemporary art um, is responsible um, for um, um, this um, quick migration. And what we also tried then is when we when we face the situation that um, that people who are very strongly involved in contemporary art, but also journalists are not really very interested in the subject. We decided quite, quite um, in the beginning to make our researchers accessible. So we organized over 400 um, lectures, um, workshops, symposiums, um, small exhibitions also in between. Um, a discussion platforms and we tried also to really to work out how is migration linked to, to architecture, how is migration linked to contemporary art, how is migration linked to uh, social changes and so on and we invited internationally important theorists, artists to come to Cologne to talk about it and so to, to help the audience or to give the audience also the possibility to be part of our process of working out this subject, which at the end was uh, um, shown, or with, which at the end came together somehow in the exhibition and in this very thick book, um, which <laughs> is very heavy to, to carry. Um, the non-migration book, we call it. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's only, it's not in, in English, but um, um, it's still some a text. Okay. It's, some text in English, it's still a project that we are um, Trans, uh, translating it into English, but, but it shows this, this thick book, what we did in these uh, three years, that um, when we started, that this uh, subject was not really um, heavily um, worked out, neither on the university level nor the artistic level. So we initiated, as, as Marion said, we initiated a lot of new um, researchers, artistically, theoretically um, researchers, 
uh, and we started more or less, I would say we were kind of pilot project in um, working out the history of the guest workers in Germany, which was, um, which was a model Germany invented, but also other countries in, in Europe um, took it over uh, later on. It was Austria, it was um, Switzerland, it was even Holland who, who, who copied the system of guest workers. So we started really to, um, to uh, yes, to work it out and to see what it meant, what it also means for migration nowadays. Maybe uh, about the book, uh, it is not in English, but it's multilingual, uh, which was a heavy debate with uh, our beloved Dumont Ballard, I have to say. <laughs> they did not like it at all. So it is in all different languages. Um, and uh, this is also something which we thought is a, a very important gesture. We, as you might know in Germany, in the moment there is a kind of heavy debate on that you have to speak German <coughs> to be kind of integrated, how you say, into the national container. Um, that language is also in, now in the United States, and a lot of conservatives talk about you know, this kind of Spanish, half Spanish, um, and the impossibility to have Spanish as a second language in a country that is English, which is also a construction as we know. Uh, but in this book, there you have uh, not only all the languages of the, this former guest worker uh, uh, people, but we said that all, everybody who is contributed, contributing a text, also a people uh, from the theoretical and intellectual field, the, the text should uh, be printed in the original language. So we have also French and others. And it's a book where you can flip through and maybe it can go through. If if you're and interested, and the idea was also to address the cosmopolitan point of view of mm -hmm. migration, which was, although we were heavily working on, on, on this German uh, history of guest workers as a basis of the, of the whole project, we always had this cosmopolitan point of view uh, in our minds, and we always tried to translate it into uh, books, lectures, exhibitions, and so on. And uh, two other projects or two other books came out uh, after uh, the opening of the exhibition. This was finished for the opening, which was also kind of... <laughs> and then, and then uh, two uh, smaller books, and it was also uh, um, books that have been coming out of two research projects. The one is a research done by Angola in Marta um, They were also in a very interesting um, for us very influential um, work. They, they focused on the relationship between tourism and migration. Again here, to find a connection of forms of mobilities which are usually seen as complete separated forms of traveling. The one subject position of the traveler, the European traveler, the European uh, travel to the south, so to say, has kind of a literature behind it, images, amateur photos, you know, a whole kind of cosmos, an archive of articulations. Um, the other, the travel from the south to the north, uh, these stories are neglected. They in some way should not have, or do not have, or not in the representation, but they do. And we had kind of a problem in the exhibition with one image, uh, we will show later, or you, you can slightly uh, see it, um, which is a car, just a very usual German car, uh, uh, VW, with a German sign, um, driving on kind of South Mediterranean coast, but it's a, a photo of a family uh, that went back home, visiting their relatives in Greece, and it looks like a tourist and so there was a scandal of some people uh, also from that we, we had one on one hand the problems with the people from the right wing <coughs> from bourgeois but we also with people from left wing you know because they say this is this, this is what you cannot do you know the people are discriminated you know it's racism is in, in this country and you cannot show such a harmful image of a reality which exists, but you cannot show because you have to show uh, how these people suffer. And this is a specific subject position, you know, that is not 
let's through, yeah, that they could just have a normal life, yeah, would have a transnational life, would have maybe a cosmopolitan life, speaking several languages, having relatives because other people also migrated in their families, maybe in, in Britain, uh, in, in France, in Germany, and in Greece and in Turkey. Yeah? Not seeing that as a quality, but saying, no, no, um, you have to, to narrate this differently. You have to narrate it as a victim story. And I think that was also very crucial, I mean, to come, come a point further that with the material that Umit was researching, actually, uh, to have this also personal material uh, from the people themselves, narrating their history and making that big. Yeah, I mean, that was also something to make it accessible and big and not just something like in a small uh, neighborhood uh, um, a museum. Maybe we should show um, the third channel of uh, work. Yeah. Or maybe there's a question. Yeah. Yeah.